He was one of the greatest lyricists of our time. He was a rebel, a poet, a frontman, and a hero to many, myself included. Dave was the founding member of the legendary glam metal band Crash Diet, the band that literally saved glam metal from extinction in the 2000s. Thanks to Dave and his work with Crash Diet, glam metal was alive and thriving once again, but just months into making it to the big time, he tragically unalived himself. Dave was loved by so many people all around the world, as were his songs, which resonated with a generation of rockers. In this video, I want to give you a little backstory on how his band came to be, and I also want to talk about those songs that we all know and love. I want to talk about what they mean to me, and how they help shape me as a person. And if you've never even heard a Crash Diet before, my hope is that after this video, you come away intrigued enough to check them out. But before we get into it, if you could give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment, it'll help this video and the channel out a great deal. So without further delay, this is the legendary Dave Leppard. Dave Leppard, aka Dave Roberto Hellman, was a Swedish singer, songwriter and guitarist from Uppsala, Sweden, and the founding member of one of the most important bands in rock and roll history, a band named Crash Diet. Crash Diet, if you're not familiar, are a glam metal band that played a pivotal role in the revival of glam metal in the 2000s. With its combination of hard rock and feminine good looks, it was a genre that dominated the 1980s, but faded out in the 90s as other musical trends took precedence. Crash Diet were the first band of their type since that decline in the 90s to be signed to a major label, the mecca of all labels, Universal Music. Crash Diet managed to break into the mainstream charts in Sweden with their debut album, Rest and Sleaze, putting their unique spin on the genre. Thanks to their success, Crash Diet managed to open the door for many bands of their type to make an impact, creating glam metal's second wave of success better known as the new wave of Swedish sleaze. Bands like Starlet Suicide, Sister, Veins of Jenner, Pretty Wild and Danger were popping up all over Sweden throughout the 2000s. Even Zinni J Zan managed to make a return during this time. But Crash Diet weren't technically just restricted to one territory. Thanks to MySpace and the dawn of YouTube, their influence had spread all across the world, and it was having a knock-on effect. Finland had Reckless Love, France had Black Rain and French Kiss, the UK had Jet Black and Peep Show, in my own country we had Easy Tiger and Nice and Sleazy, and it just kept on snowballing. But all of this never would have happened without Dave starting Crash Diet and making the impact they made. In 1997, Dave began working on a project which we know today as Crash Diet chipping away, writing songs, and recording demos. Crash Diet would officially become a band in the year 2000. Back then we had Dave on vocals and rhythm guitar, Mary Gore, who we know today as Tobias Forge of the band Ghost on lead guitar, Mace Kelly on bass, and Tom Bones on drums. And that was the first version of Crash Diet. These guys were also in a black metal band at the time called Repugnant. As far as why it didn't work out with these guys, apparently, these lads wanted Crash Diet to go in a similar direction musically as Repugnant, and this clashed with Dave's vision of a kick-ass glam metal band. Another reason I came across back in the day was the boys from Repugnant liked their drink and drugs, and Dave didn't, and decided to kick them all out and start over. Whether that one is true or not, I don't know, but it's what I heard, or rather, what I read on some site back in the day. But anyway, Dave would reform Crash Diet with the lineup we know today, which is Martin Sweet on guitar, Peter London on bass, and Eric Young on drums. And that's where Crash Diet, the Crash Diet we know of, officially begins. Now every member of Crash Diet has a cool stage name, but I have a theory on why Dave chose his. You see, in nature, leopards are typically solitary animals. They're also the smallest in the family of big cats. They have a unique language all their own. They're sexually dimorphic. They're ambush predators, and they'll eat anything they come across. Now the reason I mention this is because all of these characteristics seem to reflect the type of frontman Dave was or was trying to become. Much like the nature of a leopard, he seemed like a solitary guy. Glam metal was in his time seen as a minority genre. He wrote his songs in a way no one else did in the genre. His songs weren't just about mindless sex, drugs and rock and roll. He had so much to say and he expressed what he needed to say in such a philosophical manner. His sexuality seemed fluid and his approach to achieving his vision was fierce, as was his stage presence. Now whether or not he talked carefully about his band alias or not, I, I don't really know that. I mean, for all we know, he just probably thought it was cool to add Leopard at the end of his name because he was in a glam metal band, but I really do think that all the characteristics of a Leopard 
seem to suit him perfectly. The similarities are there and I think it was a name that suited him perfectly either way. A big part of Crash Diet, one of their main components if you will, is their look. Careful attention and detail clearly went into it. After all, if you're going to be the next Motley Crew, you've got to go all in. And boy did they. Both Dave and Peter went for the bleach blonde 80s backcombed rock do while Martin went for a more Nicky Six inspired look. Drummer Eric followed suit with a full length bleach blonde with black streaks colouring. The end result is a phenomenal looking rock band that's ready to kick ass or as. Yeah, for whatever reason, bands during that time use Z's instead of S's at the end of words, K's instead of C's and I's with two dots rather than one, probably because it looked cooler. If you compare their demo promo to how they looked in 2005, much like the progression of the music, you can see their image was something they were consistently working to get perfect. I believe Dave went this hard because he wanted himself and the band to look larger than life. He wanted himself and his band to be like something you'd never seen before and wouldn't forget easily. But he also wanted this for the music of Crash Diet as well. And I think this is something Dave and his band worked hard to carefully curate. The demos of Crash Diet are fascinating to me. They've got original versions of songs that made it to the album like Breaking the Chains and Riding Everyone. Then they have other songs that I wish made it to the album like Tomorrow, Lost Horizons and Miss Pain. What I love most about Crash Diet's demos is they are unashamedly Raw, honest and beautifully flawed. Even Crash Diet's earliest demos with the first lineup are really good too. One of Crash Diet's biggest influences in music is Guns N' Roses. Crash Diet is named after the GNR demo of the same name. But the demo for Miss Payne feels like a loving tribute to GNR. Everything from the cowbell to the Appetite for Destruction era drums, paired together with the sound of Martin and Dave's high octane style of guitar playing, Miss Payne is Crash Diet's answers to songs like Rock a Queen or I Think About You. It's sexually charged lyrics goes hard. They don't hold back. And on closer inspection, those are the type of lyrics you typically find in a black metal song, which makes sense considering the history of the band. But it just works so well as a glam metal song. It's a song they continue to play live even after the debut was released, so why it wasn't part of the album is beyond me. Tomorrow is another fantastic song that didn't make the album. Its lyrics are deep, and its sound on both versions of the track are melodic with a sense of melancholy. Its opening lyrics, I don't want to change my ways to fit into your pattern, becoming the man I don't want to be, spoke volumes to me. The great thing about it is that its lyrics can be related to so many things and one's own experiences, and it would have been a great addition to the album, even if they stored it away for the next release. But just like Miss Payne, it was shelved. Lost Horizons is another one that caught me off guard. It's a beautiful ballad full of raw emotion. Dave just had a way with words. But what I love most about Dave on these demos, oddly enough, is his delivery, his voice. There is a vulnerability in Dave's higher register. And this is the thing I love the most. Dave is a man who wouldn't typically be able to hit the highs. But he just has so much passion that he just does it somehow. The flaws in his voice delivers what he writes perfectly. You feel the emotion of it all. Through his sheer will and determination in his mission to bring this music back in all of its glory, through mind over matter, he forces himself into range, achieving the seemingly unattainable. I appreciate the effort and the beauty of it. It's life imitating art in real time, through a medium that we all possess but few choose to fully utilise. This vulnerability is especially present on his early demos and I love it. You can see what he expected from himself and the direction he was trying to take Crash Diet in. You can hear the influences of what both himself and the rest of the guys liked and you can see the progression as there is multiple versions of some of the songs. Have you ever heard the song by Joe Cocker, You Are So Beautiful? Well just at the end of that song, Joe squeezes out the highest note that he can and it's not perfect and there's a little bit of a flaw in it and even though it's not perfect, it is. That's what I feel Dave does in most of his early demos. It's just so human and that connection is just really, really good. It's really important and I just love it. Even Crash Diet's weakest demos are amazing. For example, in the song We Play It, You Scream It. In a clear attempt to break the sound barrier, Dave screams his nut off, singing as high as he can. It may not sound amazing to most, but it's the passion of it all. It fuels the lyrics and your imagination. With lyrics like that, you can imagine yourself at 2am outside the rock bar with a cool crisp copper bear pair in your hand, looking glam as fuck and ready for action, whatever might happen. And as someone who wore the look 24-7 myself, 
hearing something like this in a song was a game changer. I 100% related. But just like all demos, they're just that. A demonstration of what could be a final product. Either way, I love them. And if you're a fan of the albums and you're hungry for more, I encourage you to check them out. You might find something in them that resonates with you, just like I did. Around late 2004, Crashdite went into the studio to record their debut album, Rest in Sleaze. Released in May of 2005, this 10 track masterpiece blasted its way into the mainstream charts in Sweden, saving the glam metal genre from extinction. Thanks to this album, Crash Diet managed to put real music with a real message behind it back where it belonged. They did the seemingly impossible. All of the top players in the industry were involved in the making of this album. It was produced by Chris Laney and Anders Ringman, and the mastering was done by Bjorn Engelman. Chris Laney is a legend in the Swedish rock scene, and a man of many talents. As well as playing a part in producing Crash Diet's debut, he also played a part in Black Rain's License to the Trill album. As well as having his own musical career, he's played with a lot of the best rock bands in the world, including my hero, Zinni J. Zan. Anders Ringman is a guitarist, multi-instrumentalist, songwriter, arranger and producer. He's worked on many albums in the Swedish music scene throughout his career, working with bands like Crazy Licks and the legendary black metal band Candlemass. Bjorn Engelman is a chief mastering engineer who's worked on countless albums throughout his career, most notably U2's The Joshua Tree album, Roxette's Look Sharp, ABBA's Live 86 album, Shaka Messiah's debut album and so many more. So I think it's fair to say that Crash Diet were in really good hands for their debut. Rest in Sleeves was released on May the 20th, 2005. It spent a whopping five weeks on the mainstream charts peaking at position 12 and leaving the charts at position 53. For a glam metal band to do something like that in a time when rock music was in a decline is just unbelievable. It's a testament to the hard work of Dave and everybody involved. The competition was fierce that year and Crash Diet held their own against more popular genres. Four singles off their album were released into the mainstream Swedish singles charts. Those singles were Riot and Everyone, Breaking the Chains, It's a Miracle and Knock Em Down. For me, Riot and Everyone is everything. It's the song that made me fall in love with the band. It's a real rocker's pride type song. And it's one of the first, if not the only song I came across back then that represented us, the kids of the underground, the rockers. Man, I just love these lyrics. Dave wanted us all to stand up for ourselves and be ourselves. Be strong and make up our own minds, and not just be another mindless puppet in the freak show that is society. What a great and powerful message it was and still is. The video is simple, but it's just so, so great. We see the boys in a dirty alleyway hanging around portraying their parts as the kids of the underground. But they're not acting, because they really are the kids of the underground. We see Dave venting his frustrations as he sings the lyrics of Riot and Everyone to scenes of riots and destructions on the streets. His streets. It's great. Released a few months prior to the album, Riot and Everyone entered the charts on the 24th of February 2005, peaking at position 33. It spent seven weeks in the charts. Their next release, Knock Em Down, was another track with a hard troop message. How many of us have been caught in the grind wheel with no way out? How many of us are in it now? And how many bands or artists in the mainstream are standing up and saying, hey, this is wrong. The opening track on the album, Knock Em Down, is a real F you to the boss man and a guiding light for the working class. Crash Diet don't hold back in this one. They tell it like it is, and I love it. The music video looks for its time to be high budget. We got an A roll of the band performing behind a peep show window and B roll of a whole lot of freeze frame scenes of drama unfolding. It's a great video and the boys look cool as hell. Breaking the Chains is about self-expression through the medium of rock and roll. It's about living the life of a rock star. The lick you churn to not grow old. This is how Crash Diet let out all their pent up frustrations. They let you in on everything your heart desires. They sing about the things you want to hear. They live on the edge. They live to excess. I love this song. After careful examination of the lyrics, I feel like the video for Knock Em Down should have been for this song, and the video for Breaking the Chains should have went to the other. But either way, it still works. Out of all the videos they put out that year, Breaking the Chains, I feel, was their most ambitious and their most creative. We see the boys play the role of a typical 9 to 5 work life clashing with their real life personas. I absolutely love this video. It's perfect, and its replay value is high for me. It's a miracle is probably one of the most creative love ballads I've ever come across. It's a Miracle hits different. It isn't like an I'm sorry, I was so bad, you broke my heart, take me back type song. 
No, this one's different. Dave fell for this woman's BS because she was beautiful, or rather she had a beautiful flower. It blinded him to the truth. He didn't listen to his friends because they were always telling him the same thing. He just wanted to believe she was the one. He just can't get this woman out of his mind. He thought he had it so good. He didn't even see it coming. What I love most about this song is that it's real. It has attitude. It's beautifully poetic, but most importantly, it's relatable. It's a Miracle's music video is more of a laid back type video with the boys hanging out with their friends, rehearsing their songs. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any chart data for this one, so whether it charted or not, I simply don't know, but either way, what a gem. The singles are amazing, but this album had so many good songs, any one of them could have been a potential number one. Like the cleverly written Straight Outta Hell. I mean, just look at those lyrics. Just look at them. They're so clever. If you're just looking for some straight up, fun rock songs to groove to, this album has you covered. Queen Obscene and Ticket are great. Live Crash Diet were just on another level. Whether it was a pub or a venue or even a morning TV show, they played with such heart and conviction. And Dave led the charge. One of the last shows Dave ever performed at was put on near the end of 2005 at a venue named Kloopen. It's on the Rest and Sleaze DVD and it's one of the best shows I'd ever seen at the time. It was awe inspiring, seeing the boys all glammed up and rocking out the way it should be. Now you know, when people ask me what my influences are, yeah sure Guns N' Roses, Skid Row, all that, but really it's, it's Dave and, and Crash Diet, you know, seeing that show, it made me want to be like Dave. I wanted to have a band just like he did. I wanted to be a part of his movement. That's how good he was. That's how important he was. He saved rock and roll and he inspired a generation. But sadly, for whatever personal reasons he had, Dave decided to end things. On January 19th, 2006, the world received the terrible news of his death. This was a tragedy on so many levels. He was a son, a friend, a rock star with a legion of fans. And I don't quite know how to describe the terrible sadness I felt when I learned of how he died. But I want to take this opportunity to say something, and it may not come out like it should, but here it is anyway. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, this affects us all. You're not a prick for feeling like this if you do. I would not wish what happened to Dave on my worst enemy. Looking after our mental health and our well-being is so important, but it's often easier said than done. Life can hit hard sometimes, too hard in fact. I've lost people in my own life and some of them seemingly haven't at all. If anyone watching this video is having those type of feelings, please try and talk to someone. I'm going to leave a list of numbers here that you can call, but if doing that is too much, you can leave a comment here if you like. People who watch my videos are a fantastic bunch of people from all walks of life and the Crash Diet community as a whole are some of the most welcoming and coolest bunch of people you'll ever meet, so don't be afraid to reach out if you need to. And I would ask that anyone who you know, watches this video and sees comments of people needing help, please be kind. In early 2007, the Rest and Sleaze Festival was set up in honour of Dave's memory. It ran from 2007 right up until 2016. All of its proceeds went to Dave's memorial fund, the purpose of which was to help young musicians get a start, presumably providing funds for instruments and things of that nature. Dave Leppard is one of the greatest musicians of our time, and I think he deserves a place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Sadly, he may never get this, but his contributions to rock and roll are undeniable, and I think the world deserves to know about this legendary hero of mine and his unbelievably good band. I hope you enjoyed this documentary, and if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. This has been The Legendary Dave Leppard by Richie Kearns Productions.